Oh shit. Bad. That came out really. Next time, well, right now, yeah, right now you're already in, but next time you're going to go up here. We have a. That's that. It's a food. It's probably a donkey from the uh, marina at Santa Cruz. But Man, sure. that was crazy. Yeah, that was. That was well, good thing you didn't wreck any fish. I need to make sure I have everything. Yeah. Shark shield. GoPro, that. Yeah. Okay, boys, should we try that again? Woo! All right, boys. Woo! Should we try that again, boys? That was poorly timed. So the swell today is around three feet. But there's this wall right here. I'll show you guys. So this wall right here, really bounces back waves. So as you can see, look, it looks super flat. I probably, sh I probably should have uh, gone out a little farther. That was a bad mistake. But nobody got hurt and I didn't lose any gear. But this wall, when a big wave comes, these waves come sideways. So this isn't really the best spot to be launching. All right, boys, let's try this again. Cause mama didn't raise no quitter. I got nailed though. One of the hardest launches I've ever had. It, uh, the sets are so quick. Should I, 
call my losses or should I go for it one more time? Woo! I didn't expect to go for a swim today. Also what makes this surf launch hard is the waves come out of nowhere. Like you can't see them from a distance and then they just build really quick. something today boys because that was a rough start Ugh. I got my new pedal drive Woo! I'm like their guinea pig this pedal drive is smooth man they definitely made improvements to this thing so smooth and it's fast I swear, I'm, I might be getting a half a mile per hour, maybe one mile per hour faster on my troll. So if you guys are looking into kayaks, um, there's two types. There's the pedals, like the ones I have, and it has a propeller on it. And there's also the Mirage drives that you step, it's like a stepper. I would equate the, the Mirage drive as like a helicopter. You can spin, you can turn quicker, you can spin around, you can uh, stop and go pretty quick, but the pedals are easier on your knees, you kind of build your momentum and you get the momentum working for you, so it's a little easier for trolling and going a little quicker speeds, long distance. Um, the Mirage Drive is definitely more reliable though. They got a nice selection of Lucky Craft here. For all the diehard fans. That one has a really nice shine to it. Super Strike Poppers. These Super Strikes are really good for the long distance casting. They come in all sorts of weights and comes in floating and sinking. It's really popular on the East Coast. Well, you know what, when you used to throw, like, 
Wow, look at this new color of SB Minnow. That's what I love about Mark is Mark always has the latest stuff. All right, guys, so if you haven't seen these new colors yet, definitely stop by and uh, check them out. They look really nice. So if you've never heard of the Duo Lures brand, Mark is the only one that carries them in the Bay Area. And I've looked. They don't even stock them in Amazon. So he, he used to have a ton more. But I've been slowly buying them out. Secretly. Stocking up. But I wanted to let you guys know that they're here so you guys can grab a couple for yourself They come straight from Japan and they're really decently priced They're my favorite lure of all time So it comes in sinking and floating Alright guys, so this floral clear is pretty cool. It's a uh, half fluorocarbon. Well, it's a uh, mono coated in fluorocarbon. So it kind of gives you best, a little best of both worlds. A little cheaper than fluorocarbon, but stiffer than mono. Here's Seagar, which is my favorite. A lot of people like the P-Line fluorocarbon. He has a lot of high visibility stuff. So if you want to see your line, if you're fishing next to people or you're helping other people out. A lot of people like to use it for their main line so they can see it and then back it with fluoro or mono. Bunch of Power Pro, Suffix, my favorite J Braid. If you want to catch halibut from shore, he has these slab zones custom made for him. You won't find these anywhere. James Me mentioned these. These are the B chain swivels really helps with tangles Hold on, I'm gonna count. so if I wanted to catch some salmon off the pier what would I need first you start with a, a five and a half ounce uh, spider, spider sinker okay and the spider sinker needs to be bent in such a way that these little prongs uh, stick in the sand great so would would it actually be okay to just probably smarter to just leave that little rubber band on there? Probably. You could you could do whatever you want. You could do what you want. Makes a little grappling hook. But you want it to stick in Got the it. sand. Okay. So this is attached to your main line, and you throw this out. Only this. Basically a zip line. Pretty much. You're gonna create a zip line. That's right, or a trolley line as we call it. Okay. So that gets thrown in the water. So you want to anchor it somehow. That's all it is, is your line that goes to this and then you throw it out and get it stuck. That's right. So you got a you got a nice tight line going straight up to the top of the pier. From there you would slide down a float with a leader on it with your bait on the bottom. Okay. Let me see if I could dig up some paperwork and even cool. show you what it would what, what look like. So guys, the reason why we're using this to get this stuck 
is because when you're fishing on the pier, there's so many people and you don't want to get tangled up with the current and all of that. So people, they get their, they get everything hooked in so that nobody's moving, nobody's swaying, getting everybody tangled up, everybody's stationed together. So now let's imagine you have that nice tight line going okay. up. You have that zip line. Right. So what you want to do is the you want to... Pier high up so that it's angled down, right? right? And you attach a float, which is on uh, usually a six foot drop line. Okay. So this would attach to the line and you would slide it to the water. Okay. Now below that, you'd have some beads for light reflection. So and this would be, so this would be hanging, right? And you're sliding it down. Right. Now below that would be your hook with your bait. Okay. Of course, we don't have it out here because it would stink up the store. Yes. So but you um, would have a, uh, I have a, I have a photograph somewhere, not a photo, but I have a illustration. Let me find it. So you guys don't need to worry about how to make all this. He has it all pre-made and ready for you here. He has all the bait, all the weights, everything you need. And uh, there's not many videos of this online because this is, this setup is specifically for the Pacific Pier. So Mark is great and has this all set up so that you can visualize it a little better. Come in here and grab one of these so you know what you're doing but basically you have that main line right that tight main line that you got the line stuck to and then basically you have this rig that he gave you that you can buy you could buy the weight so basically this is gonna slide down slide down slide down because you have a little weight right here and then this little float is gonna keep it on top of the water so it's gonna keep it at a certain um, level in the water. But basically come in, grab one of these so you know what you're doing. The rig Bought. is 17 bucks, the whole rig. Okay. Because you'll need to have the float. Also inside the, first of all, inside the kit has the weight, this float, an extension if you wanna fish even deeper, pre-tied hooks, one for striped bass, one for salmon, rubber bands to keep them on the hook, uh, the instructions, of course, and uh, a bait threader. You need a bait threader because that's how you're gonna, that's how you have to uh, put the leader through the bait. Got it. And then that way the bait will hang. Some people have tried using rubber bands and shrink tape, but that doesn't work because as the bait melts, if you use a frozen bait, it starts to sort of curl up. Got it. So that's where the rubber bands would come in handy and the line going through the bait. Okay. So you say, you anchor it in place. So you're basically nice hanging top. it there. You're not really, it doesn't have a tw uh, spin to it, right? No, it's just gonna hang there. Now you can accessorize it by adding uh, flashers. Yes, so basically, um, when would you need an extension? Uh, sometimes the fish are deeper. So our extent, our, our leads are usually five and a half to six feet. That's if you want to fish five and a half, six feet below. Okay. And sometimes... So they'll, the salmon hit five or six feet under the water? Right, right. Wow. They usually don't go too much higher than that, but sometimes they do. But mostly you'll find them deeper. So an extension will put it another five and a half or six feet. So you're fishing 12 feet low. Okay. And when you add a flasher, does that make the bait rise or does that make it sink? Flasher only create spins a little bit in the water, but it only refracts the light. Okay. So it flashes, so it gets the attention of the, of the fish, that's all. But as um, I'm talking about, like, what does it do to the bait? Does it rise it, make it rise? Does it make it nope, the same spot? No, flasher just, a flasher is just another extension. And uh, it's just there to refract the light and to attack and to attract the eye of the fish. That's all there, it is. It won't, um, it won't like, spin it. okay, so it's... Maybe it's, when it undulates up and down in the water, if the waves are great, it might, as it's dropping and lifting, it might twist a little bit, but I don't okay. think it's going to do much so more So it's now. basically an extension. It's an with, extension. Okay, right. okay. An attractive. Okay, and attractive, yes. I can figure out the rest. I'm going to push people over, man. All right. They're going to want to catch some salmon. I know. All right, man. Thanks.